What's up guys, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all managing to stay fit and healthy out there guys and you managed to get some fresh air and some exercise time in while we're still in lockdown in the UK. Now, I'm sure you're all wondering why I am lying down in my hallway at home at the start of this video, but today we're gonna to cover a topic that, if I'm quite honest, is pretty boring but super important. So we're gonna try and keep this video as fun and as interesting as possible. You can see in front of me are a nice muddy pair of Hoka Torrent 2s fresh from the trail. So in today's video, we're gonna talk you through how I clean my muddy running shoes. So the first thing we need to do is fire up this bad boy and then you're gonna to need to select probably the hottest cycle on your washing machine. So I'd say around 50, 60 degrees. So let's click that in. Next up, we're gonna grab ourselves two washing capsules. That's right, we're gonna go for two, not one. When our shoes are really muddy, we want them coming out nice and clean, but we also want them coming out smelling as fresh as a spring morning. So open up the door, two capsules in the washing machine. Then we're gonna grab hold of our muddy, smelly shoes. They're going in. And then we're gonna shut that door nice and tight. Then all you need to do is hit that start button and then grab yourself a cup of coffee, go and take a seat on the sofa, put your feet up and let the washing machine work its magic. Okay, that's not how we wash our running shoes, really. Let's grab them out and let's run you through how we wash them properly. It is actually a question I get asked a lot on the channel and in store is, is it okay to throw our dirty running shoes in a washing machine? I personally think it's not the best idea in the world. One, for your washing machine, but two, also for the lifespan of your shoes. I think putting your running shoes through a hot wash in a washing machine, it can affect durability when it comes to the uppers, but it can also weaken glues in the construction. You can start to have issues that way. But however, it is really important that we clean our shoes after a wet, dirty run. The last thing you wanna do is just take your shoes off when you get home and kick them in a corner feeling all sorry for themselves. So cleaning our shoes can really prolong the life of our running shoes, but the first thing we need to do is get the shoe ready to be cleaned. So the things I do before I get down to actually washing the shoe is, if the shoe is covered in mud, really muddy, then I tend to take it outside with a heavy brush and I'll remove a lot of them big pieces of dirt or the loose dirt. Um, top tip, I tend to to keep a brush in the van so if I've driven to a run and I get back and my shoes are muddy I can actually give them a good brush off before I get back into my van so not only does it keep my van clean but you're getting the mud off your shoes first then I tend to remove the insoles um, the insoles in most running shoes nowadays are removable if you've got a model of shoe where they're stuck down it's not the end of the world but if you can get them insoles out and then I'll take the laces out of both shoes because that just makes it a bit easier to get in all them nooks and crannies around the tongue of the shoe and just to to give the shoe a proper thorough cleaning, but while the laces are out, you can give them a clean too. Now, the next bit of advice when it comes to cleaning our dirty running shoes comes with a bit of a condition. I don't wanna be blamed for dirty showers and dirty baths all over the world, so definitely clean up after yourself. Or even better, you can fill up a bucket with warm water and clean your shoes outside. I do, however, use the shower at home to clean my shoes, but I always make sure I leave it nice and clean, just how I found it. I tend to have the shower water on warm, so not piping hot but nice and warm. I give both shoes a thorough rinsing off first before I do anything else. Then I keep that shower water on the shoes and I grab my little scrubbing brush. I believe this is a, an old nail brush. I don't use it for cleaning my nails anymore. It is just for cleaning my dirty shoes, but it works really well. The bristles are hard, but they're not too abrasive. So you can give the shoe a really good scrub and it's not gonna damage the upper fabric at all. So top tip, if you can get hold of one of these little nail brushes, it makes a great tool when it comes to cleaning our dirty running shoes. So once we've got that upper all clean and dirt free, I'll focus my attention on the insoles. It's amazing how much stuff them insoles can gather. So I'll give them a good old scrubbing, hose them off, 
off, give them a good squeeze out. You'll be amazed how much dirt comes out of them insoles and then I'll put them to one side. And then I focus on the outsole as well. I even clean the outsole of the shoe. I know it's a little bit OCD, but you know, if the upper's all nice and clean, we want a nice clean outsole to match. Then I tend to grab the shower head, aim it inside the shoe, give that shoe a thorough rinsing out, any loose debris, get it out of the shoe. Give that top sole of the shoe a nice clean as well. Grab them laces that you took out earlier and give them a good scrub off. The last thing you want to do is put muddy, dirty laces back into a nice clean shoe. And then grab both shoes, tip them over, stand them up for about 10 minutes and allow any internal moisture to drain out of the shoe into the bath just before we stuff them with newspaper. I personally think putting newspaper inside your shoes after the cleaning process really helps speed up that drying time, which can be really important, especially if you've only got one pair of trail shoes and you want to get them clean and dry before you run in them the following day. The paper really helps with that, but super important guys. Once that paper's done its job, you need to grab it out of the shoe. So there's no point allowing that paper to soak up all the moisture and then leaving it in there for three or four hours. So 20, 30 minutes and then grab that paper out. Now the really important part of the whole cleaning process of our running shoes, similar to when we throw our shoes in a hot washing machine, it can damage fabrics and weaken glues. We don't want to dry our shoes out too quickly on top of something too hot and on direct heat. Ideally, we want to dry that shoe out a bit more naturally, air it out, make that whole drying process a bit more gradual. So ideally, put your shoe on top of something warm or next to something warm, but make sure it's not too hot. If you're lucky enough to have one of them sort of old school airing cupboards in your house, then fantastic. It's the perfect place to dry our running shoes out. You can just pop them in there in the evening and they'll be nice and dry in the morning, drying out nice and gradual over time. Obviously, if you haven't got that, similar to me, I tend to use a, a radiator in my hallway. I'll turn it down to sort of one or two, so it's just nice and warm, not too hot. I'll lay a couple of sheets of newspaper on top of that radiator, and then I'll tip the shoes upside down with the insoles and with the laces that we cleaned earlier. It tends to take around three or four hours to sort of dry the shoes out, so not long at all, and less likely to cause any damage. Once everything's nice and dry, pop the laces, pop the insoles back in your shoes, and there you have it, a nice pair of clean trail running shoes, all ready to get muddy again. Now, I know this all seems like a bit of a faff, and I suppose it is, and by the end of the sort of winter trail running, running season in the UK. I am pretty fed up with cleaning my shoes, but I think it really does make a difference. I do have the odd customer in store and they bring a shoe back and they're a bit concerned about it not holding up to mileage and it fatiguing quite quick. And sometimes them shoes look like they've never seen any water or a scrubbing brush. So I think by taking that little bit of time and effort, cleaning our shoes, looking after our kit, it really can help prolong the life when it comes to durability. So there it is guys, that's how I look after and clean my running shoes throughout the British winter months. Uh, I really hope you've enjoyed the video guys. I hope it's answered all the shoe cleaning questions that you had, but don't worry if it hasn't. If you've got any more questions at all guys, get them in the comments below. We've got lots of exciting shoe reviews planned over the next couple of weeks for you guys at home, including Hoka One One's exciting new Carbon X2 racer and Jim Warmsy will actually be wearing that shoe uh, in a few days to try and break the 100k world record. Uh, I think it's happening on the 23rd of this month. We've also got our first ever ASICS running shoe review on the channel coming very soon and actually my first ever trail running shoe from ASICS. We might also have a cheeky little offering from Innovate along the way too. So we got lots of great content heading your way guys so don't forget give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really does help support the channel and help us to grow as a channel and it's completely free guys so hit that subscribe button, come along and join the Run for Adventure family. Also it'd be great if you joined us on our other social media platforms so you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook or Strava. But for now guys thanks for watching, we will see you on the channel very soon but as always stay safe and keep on running. How's that for acting? No coffee in there really. <laughs>